Okay, so here's the speakers that I got. Um, I had actually done an unboxing video. Um, apparently I lost the uh, video somewhere. Not sure where it went to, but uh, I figured I'd give them an overview again. I ordered these uh, under the recommendations of the guys at Warehouse Guitar Speakers. Um, it was sort of a recommendation for an all-around pairing of two different speakers. I ended up going with an ET90 and a Retro 30. And they're saying that the Retro 30s have a super big firm bottom and a nice smooth extended top end. And the ET series are full of organic warmth and tons of mid-range. So I'll pull these out of the box and I'll uh, let you see what they look like all around. Okay, so that gives you uh, an idea of how big the magnets are on these things. Um, really nice looking speakers. I'm going to wire them up in series. So I got two 8 ohm speakers for a 16 ohm load. And there's the ET90. I kind of wish they were both uh, a nice bright color to show in the back of the cap, but that's alright. Let me flip these over, I'll get look at the cones on them. I thought I'd give you a rundown and a close-up of the, uh, the hardware that I bought for the project. What I tried to do was um, basically order it all from one place to save on the shipping costs. It's really hard to source parts in Canada for some reason. Um, if you live in the continental United States, it would be quite a bit easier. I got all the stuff here pretty much, I think, from Parts Express. They'll have everything you need. They might not have the variety you're looking for necessarily as far as the grill cloth or the Tolex, but all the hardware is um, pretty much there. And I'll put a link below and try to run down some of the costs of some of the stuff if you're interested in that. So we'll start off with uh, just the back plate. I'm not sure. I've decided if I'm going to use uh, these smaller jacks or the nicer ones yet. Probably the nicer ones. Those were, I don't know, a few bucks a piece. Obviously I'm going to put some corners on here to keep it protected. Sadly, they ended up sending me the wrong ones. If you can see that, it's got a bit of a lip on it. And I made the front of the cabinet quite a bit beefier, so that's not going to fit. Uh, this will fit on the back, however. So if you end up buying three-quarter plywood for the back, that'll fit snug on both sides, no problem. So I'm going to end up putting four of these on the back part. Uh, but they won't fit on the front. They're going to send me uh, a bunch of new ones anyway. So the difference will be that little piece will be smooth. It'll be cut out so there'll be none of that lip in there. Some basic four, uh, four rubber feet. Some cable. And some... Cable and some plugs for the back. I'm going to make a speaker cable myself. And then there's the handles for the front. This is the one I ordered originally. For some reason it just it wasn't doing it for me. I don't know if it's the plastic or it's just the shape of it. It's hard to find ones that are kind of smallish but I ended up ordering another one of these. Actually two but um, just a nicer quality looking piece anyway. It'd be a little sturdier. I was concerned that it was going to be too big, but I guess you have to have one big enough to put your hand in and pull it up. Not that it's going to be super heavy, but I didn't want to do a strap on top. That's a, bra that's a back breaker, so. What else? I may or may not do some piping. 
I found some of this actually at a website in Canada. They, um, they sell boat supplies and vinyl product anyway. So I may or may not attach this. I'm gonna wait to see how it looks once I get the grill cloth on the baffle and then we'll go from there. It's just a basic um, fender style cloth. More, more like on what you'd find on a Tweed amp, but uh, I kind of like the look of it. So we're gonna do that. And then here's just a, uh, a piece of the black Tolex. Um, I think they call it Marshall style. It's pretty, I don't know, pretty basic looking. What do they call it? Uh, elephant skin or something like that. Anyway, uh, there's the parts. Let's see what's next. Just getting ready to install the grill cloth here. I've already cut it to a basic size. And now I'm just going to line it up. Um, this stuff was sitting out in the garage, so I warmed it up a bit with a hair dryer. Uh, but I wouldn't go overboard because it is uh, plastic, so it will melt. And uh, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe there's a front and a back sort of to this this style of cloth. So make sure you pick the side that you want to face out. Um, could be preference, but they look a little bit different. One side seems to be a bit more brownish than the other. Anyway, so I'm going to start by just lining it up at the bottom during one of the lines. Now I'm going to make a fold. And I'm going to fold it all the way along the edge just to get it started. Okay, so I've got a nice flat edge here. Might help to have a long straight edge so you can press it down. And that'll be a good right angle to bend the to bend the grill cloth over before I start stapling. So I've got one staple in. I'm just going to continue about both sides. Try to keep a fairly straight line, and then I'll snug it up when I get to the other side. Okay, so the one side snugged up. Now I'm going to make sure that the cloth is aligned. So again, using some of the lines on the cloth, make sure that it's exactly 45 degrees and perpendicular here, both sides. Double check it, make sure the line's straight with the fabric. And then we'll give it a test. Let's see what the front looks like. All right, looks pretty straight. I'll continue along all the outer edges. It looks straight to my eye. It ended up having to go along the edge here to get it perfectly square for the final piece. And then obviously I cut 45 degrees at the corners and then restapled at the back. Let's see if it fits.